Well, Mel and Trooper Bob sat down last week to talk about the important reminders that you need to know about school buses this school year and how you and your students can stay safe. Students across the Lowcountry are getting ready for school, and there are some important reminders to help them get to and from school safely. Our traffic safety expert, Trooper Bob, is here with us with what you need to know before you hit the road. Trooper Bob, what's the most important thing that you think uh, parents and students should know? Well, when to stop for a school bus, that's always a big question. The big question is, do we need to stop if there's a meeting, if there's a grass meeting, a raise meeting? Take all that out of the books. Here's a simple yeah, rule right, here. right there. Four lane roadway, just like, let's say, for example, Ashley Phosphate Rivers Avenue. You don't need to stop if you're approaching a stop school bus going the opposite direction. Okay. You don't need to stop. If it's four more lanes, you can go. That's the key there. Two lane roadway, Highway 78 in Somerville, for example, two lane road. You're approaching a stop school bus, you have to stop. And anytime you're behind the school bus going in the same direction, regardless of how many lanes, you have to stop. It's important because there's a lot of new people here in the low country. As school starts, they might not be familiar with our laws in South Carolina. Different states have different laws. We also have a lot of visitors. Now, if you pass a stop, Stop school bus and uh, stop fire, stop arm violation. You're looking at that over a thousand dollar fine, six points on your license. And last year there were over three thousand seven hundred stop arm violations reported. It's crazy stuff. It really uh, is a serious violation, and people need to pay attention. Uh, what advice do you have for parents and guardians as they're getting those kids off to the school bus and the school, uh, you know, safely this morning? They're going to the bus stop. Uh, they might be wondering, hey, uh, what do I need to know? What's new this year? What, what do you have to tell? Them? Well, kids like to play around on the bus stop. Yeah. So you guys stay at least six uh, giant steps back from the curb. We don't want anyone falling into the roadway. Wait until the bus comes to a complete stop before you start to get on. Wait till that door opens and then start to get on. If you drop something, let the bus driver know. Don't go under the bus to try to get it. And don't go behind the bus. They don't have backup cameras. The bus driver sits high off the ground. They're not going to be able to see you. Anytime you think something's wrong, always alert the bus driver first. Those drivers are dealing with loud, a lot of kids on the bus, so they can only see and hear so much. You got to watch out for them. Well, that too. And the bus driver, they're going to make sure traffic is stopped before they even let you cross the street. So always pay attention to that driver. Absolutely. I want to talk about an incident that happened in 2009. A Kershaw County deputy was hit while directing traffic right outside of an elementary school. Of course, this is something that does not happen very often, but it can happen. Luckily, her injuries were minor and she was released from the hospital shortly after. The driver, though, told police he was speeding and looking at his phone when he hit the deputy. Looking at your phone while you're driving, we know it's against the law. Well, it's a distraction. It's a First, distraction. It's a distraction. First of all, the school zone, the speed limits there are a lot slower because it's a school zone. A lot yeah. going on. Parents pulling out, buses going in and out. So you want to definitely limit your distractions and pay attention to uh, cross guard, crossing guards and uh, anyone in the roadway there. Yeah. What tips do you have as folks are driving through those school zones? Well, pay attention to the crossing guard. Know that if it's a school zone, the lights are going to be flashing in that zone. You have to lower your speed limit. Watch out for the crossing guard. That crossing guard is not going to allow those students to cross unless they um, unless traffic is stopped if you're on a bicycle and you're a student walk that bicycle across you know you want to make sure a lot of kids there all at one time crossing you need momentum to be on that bike we don't want you falling off the safest thing to do is walk it across i think just in general folks need to be more aware slow down it's the beginning of school we just want everyone to stay precious safe. cargo that's yeah. what on our buses so we'll make sure we keep them safe too all right trooper bob thanks so much thank you Gratitude to those who fight to protect our country. Today, nonprofit Operation Gratitude and the Charleston community filled 8,500 care packages for local veterans. News 4 Sadeja Smalls was there and shares more about the initiative. Sadeja. That's right, Conley. Operation Gratitude's mission is all about lifting spirits. The care packages are filled by hand with snacks, hygiene products, and most importantly, handwritten letters. Veterans I spoke with today told me the letters help soldiers feel close to home when deployed overseas. I hope they feel that there's people out there that love them and appreciate them for the sacrifices that them as well as their families have made for this country. Thomas Connor served in the U.S. Army National Guard. He remembers the packages sent to him while he was deployed. When you're, you know, when you're deployed, you're away from your family. You kind of lose that home atmosphere. Um, you still have your, your friends and military family with you, but it's not always the same. So when you get those packages from back home, it, it gives you that sense of, of feeling that you're, you are back home and there are still people that care about you and they haven't forgotten about you. 
The Thank You for Your Service initiative started with just four care packages. Years later, Operation Gratitude has been able to serve over 3.8 million troops across the world. Care packages include handwritten letters. The thing that they always talk about is that letter. You know, someone that they will probably never meet took a moment to write a note to appreciate them for the work that they're doing every day. And a teddy bear is also included. It's their battalion buddy. You know, it's to keep them company until mom or dad comes home. You know, and, and that's just a way for us to honor our tiny heroes. Their mission, to lift spirits and show gratitude for all veterans. Veterans do have done great and do great things for us, and this is the least we can do for them. Operation Gratitude is always accepting volunteers to help assemble care packages for veterans. I have a link to more information on our website at abcnews4.com. Dorchester Paws is overcrowded, and it's creating concerns for staff. News 4, Sedasia Smalls was at the shelter today, and Sedasia, how many animals are currently being housed there? Hey CG, Dorchester Paws has a housing limit of about 70 animals, but now they're housing 164. And with the shelter being dangerously full, staff is encouraging the community to either foster or adopt. Dorchester Paws is the only animal shelter in Dorchester County. With the huge influx of stray and owner surrender pets, the shelter started pop-up kennels as a way to give pets a home. So temporary kennels set up in the hallways where we're able to house dogs. We have some set up on standby. That way if we receive any animals that are strays or um, owner surrenders here today, they'll have to go into pop-ups. Fullwood says the shelter wants animals to have a more stable home. To help, the shelter is lowering their adoption fees. We know that what we do here is a community effort just because we serve so much um, of Dorchester County as a whole. Um, right now, all adoptions are half price for dogs ages four months and older. Um, so that means our senior dogs right now are only $25. If individuals aren't able to adopt, they encourage fostering. Becca Zimmerman has been volunteering at the shelter for about five years now. and She says the overcapacity is the worst she's ever seen. It's just coming and taking a dog on the date to get them out of the loud shelter environment is really helpful. Staff is hopeful they'll be able to lower their capacity to serve more. If we reduce the population here on site at Dorchester Paws, we can work with each animal more uh, individually. We can provide them the level of care they need. We can love on them more. Um, we can get them more socialized and playing more often. If you're missing an animal, come here. If you're interested in adopting, come here. Even if you're not interested in any of that and you just want to help, um, we could use every little bit that we can get. Now, in addition to their dog adoption fees being half price, cat adoptions are lower too. Dorchester Pauls encourages the community to help and rescue a pet. 